finding good workers has been difficult post-pandemic. Heck, finding any workers has been difficult. Sometimes, you take what you can get. Sometimes, what you get is a chilling nightmare. I work at a small town IGA as receiving and stocking. It's not a glamorous job, but I enjoy it. I get to see a lot of people as I restock shelves. I know almost everyone who comes in, and the store staff are great together. We are that perfect small town business. About a month ago, our longtime janitor retired, so the store hired a new guy. The first time I saw him, he was cleaning a spill in aisle five. I went up to him and said welcome. He just looked up at me, said nothing, and returned to cleaning the mess. In that second of eye contact, I got chills down my back. He came across as a menace, and I decided to keep my distance from him and hope the store would find a better quality person soon. This guy just gave me the creeps. Later in the afternoon, I was stocking a shelf and was down on my knees placing the item when I felt a shadow come over me. I turned and looked up, and he was staring down at me. He moved down the aisle and disappeared around the end cap as I got to my feet. It was just spooky how he did that without a word. Similar things like this happened throughout the day. I tried to ignore the behavior, but I really was unnerved. The next several weeks went the same way. I'd catch the guy staring at me bizarrely from down the aisle or back in the stockroom. In general, he seemed a little bit off, but he was doing his job. I decided not to let him bother me and kept a distance where I could. I know it's possible to have coworkers we might not get along with, but it shouldn't stop us from doing our work. On one quiet night, I was stocking shelves and had been 20 minutes straightening an aisle. At one point, I turned around and caught a glimpse of the guy watching me through the shelving from the other aisle. Just standing there watching me, hidden behind the shelves from an opening he had created by pushing some cake boxes to the side. It was as if I was being stalked by this creep. The next time I saw him, he was sitting in the back at an employee table, and I got my nerve up to go over and start a casual conversation. Maybe if I took the initiative, he would be an okay person. I approached, said hello, and sat down at the table with him. He didn't look at me or even in my direction. I said, long day. He said, yeah. He still wasn't looking at me, and I tried casually talking about how much produce had come and gone from the store that day. He gave a few one-word grunts and seemed annoyed that I was speaking with him. After a minute, I got up and said I was back to work, concluding that the guy was an extreme nut job and I had no interest in interacting with him again. On my way to collect another dolly of product to be shelved, I stopped off at the toilet. We had a restroom for employees in a narrow hallway in the back near the receiving dock. I went in and was washing my hands when I heard a shopping cart outside the door. I dried my hands and went to open the door, but it only would open an inch, not enough to get my fingers through. I waited in the toilet for 15 minutes until another employee came to use the restroom and remove the cart that pinned the door shut. I speculated that the new guy had done it. It was only he and I in the back when I went in. Maybe he thought it was funny and some kind of joke, but I didn't like his humor, if it was. I confronted him as soon as I saw him mopping in the store. He only said, didn't do it. It didn't convince me. I was sure he was the one who barricaded me in the john. Again, I was doing my work, and I could feel his presence behind me. He had been slowly moving up behind me, and was now directly behind me, standing no more than four feet away. I shouted, what do you want from me? He just leered at me with this devilish grin. I gathered up my dolly and quickly went to the other side of the store. I didn't see him for the rest of the night. In fact, I never saw him again. A week later, the cashier asked me if I had heard about Martin. I said, who's Martin? She said, you know, that janitor we had for a couple of weeks last month. Well, you know, he was arrested for assault and battery, and they have him locked up. After work, he ambushed the manager and tried to choke her behind the supermarket. I was shocked and not in the same breath. I still wonder if Martin planned to ambush me the last night I saw him. A little over a year ago, I was driving home from an interview in State College, Pennsylvania. 
It's a long drive, and there's very little between State College and Philadelphia. I had also chosen a little less frequented state route to keep off the monotonous interstate. I thought it would be more interesting and had no reason to rush home. It was after dark, maybe around 9 p.m., and the only thing open to get some food was a small IGA food mart. It was a small town, and I didn't even see a McDonald's. I parked in front, where there was only one other car. The store was brightly lit, and a little bell chimed when I walked in, but beyond that, the store was eerily quiet. I didn't need many things. I was thinking of a soft drink or a bottle of water and nuts. I was hoping they might have some deli sandwiches. I could always make do with Lance toasty peanut butter crackers or their toasty cheese sandwich crackers. I just needed something to get me to Philly. After I scoped out the chips aisle and walked around the store, I realized I was the only customer in the market. I grabbed a couple of items and went to the cash register to check out. This store had three checkout lanes, but when I put my items down, no one was there to ring me out, and none of the lanes were self-service. I waited a minute and no one came. There didn't seem to be any employees in the store. The entire store was eerily silent. I wondered where the employee was. I took a few steps back and peeked down several aisles. When I reached the last aisle, a man approached the front. He had been in a back office or storage area when I arrived. He looked up and saw me and gave me a shocked look. I said, hello, do you work here? He said no, he was just doing some work in the back. He asked if I had been there very long. I said no, I had just come in for a few quick items and now needed to check out, but I haven't been able to find any employee. He said, oh, I've been working with the cashier in the back. Come with me and we can get her. I said no thanks, I'll just wait if I may. It sounded too weird, and the guy didn't look very professional, so I became alarmed at his offer. At that moment I looked out the front window and noticed the blue lights of a police car racing down the road toward the market. I had no reason to believe that they were coming to the market. I just commented to the man, oh look, something's up, here comes the police. With that the man went out, got into the car next to mine and drove away. I was still standing at the register when the police car pulled up, and an officer dashed into the store with a gun drawn. He asked me if anyone else was in the store. I said only me and maybe the cashier in the back. A man just left in a blue Ford though. In a few more minutes, several more police cars arrived with lights flashing. The cashier was found in the back, where she had been assaulted and the store robbed. She was able to call the police when the man left the back office. I don't know if the police caught the guy but I'm lucky to be unharmed. I still can't believe I conversed with a violent robber during a crime. Would you sell your kids? Several years ago, when my twins were seven years old, we went to the supermarket, as usual, to shop for the week's groceries. The girls are a little rambunctious, and it's difficult for me to keep them close. They're apt to run down every aisle, knock over every display, and chat with anyone willing to give them the time. When we turned into the store, a man looked over and smiled. That was not unusual, as the girls are cute in their matching dresses and blonde braids, and when I say tumbled into the store, they really do laugh out loud. They're their own circus. The three of us always attract attention wherever we go, but this was different. This man's smile was somehow not warm. He was well-dressed in his mid-forties with a little bit of a belly. He looked foreign, but I could not tell you where he was from. This part of Washington gets a lot of foreign diplomats, workers, and visitors. He stopped what he was doing and looked at us as if measuring us, the whole time with that foreboding smile. Being a girl of the city, I was used to creeps. I quickly ushered the girls into the market and made our way to a busy aisle with our cart. As we came around the fresh produce, I saw the man walking towards us with a shopping cart. I gave him an evil eye as a warning not to bother us and he turned towards the fruits as if looking for the freshest on the rack. It stood out more than if he'd just kept walking. I turned and moved to the dairy, but when I turned back, the girls were telling the man that the cherries were really good and the grapes were tasteless. I yelled, girls, come now, stay with me. At every aisle, the man always appeared with his empty grocery cart, always with that cold smile. It seemed he was breathing through his teeth weirdly and strangely. At some point, he put a bag of potato chips into his cart to make it look like he was shopping. The twins seemed to catch my anxiety and said, 
Mommy, why is that man following us? I laughed, trying not to frighten the girls, and said he probably thinks we're following him. Come on, stay close. When we got to the register, the girls and I were having a silly conversation about who knows what, but all concern over the man was gone. The line to the register, of course, has all the candy, and the girls are begging as they always do for this or that candy bar or chewing gum or sour drops and putting up a fuss. I said, girls, we don't have money for candy today, so let it go. The girls stopped begging, but gave those pouting faces. Then there was this male voice behind me that apologetically said, if money's a problem, I'd be happy to buy your girls the candy. They're beautiful girls. Are they your girls? I said, yes, of course. He continued, I couldn't help but notice you don't have money to get them what they want. How old are they? They're twins, are they not? I can help you. I have lots of money. Money's no problem for me. I nearly snapped, and I'm sure my face showed it. He laughed as if he had just made some kind of joke. Then with a straight face he says, I'm serious. How much for the girls? I'd like them both. How much? I stared at him wide-eyed in complete disbelief. He goes on, how much for the twins? I'd like to have both. I'd take one or the other if you can't do both. It'd still work for me. Name your price. Money isn't a problem. I'll give you whatever you need. I can give them whatever they want. Beautiful little girls. I can't even open my mouth to answer this creep. The teenage cashier listening on also is incredulous. Her mouth is agape, stunned by the conversation. She's frozen and no longer scanning the groceries. Call the police, I say to the cashier, as I grab my girls and hold them close. At this, the man shrugs and walks out of the supermarket. The manager comes over, and I ask him to escort the girls and me to our car. I saw no sign of the man, but we waited until the police arrived and gave a report to the officer. He said he would drive past our house and check several times throughout the day after we were home. I thanked him. The creep never reappeared. I'm always watching the twins and never let them out of my sight. 